right. Uh, coming back again to SRTM. Now we have Michal, and he will be talking about more trust in your bios. Thank you for attending my talk, and hello. Um, I would like to uh, present you my recent work about the static root of trust for measurement that I have implemented with Coreboot, Vboot TPM, and a permanent uh, SPA flash protection. I am a human engineer at a Polish-based embed consulting company, Shim and I'm most interested in advanced hardware features in Coreboot and various security solutions. So um, I will briefly describe what the SRTM is, how it is uh, implemented in Coreboot, uh, and describe each of the components. And I will also um, present what other um, additional features I have added to, to the firmware to make it better and more customer friendly and user friendly. Of course, I will show some small demo how it works and um, describe some future improvements that can be made in my um, implementation. So uh, what the static root of trust for measurement is? It is a um, root of trust that is based on a piece of immutable code. Um, each root of trust requires to be set up with its own core, which is a basement of the whole chain of trust. And we call it the core root of trust for measurement, also CRTM, so an abbreviation. And in core boot and other measurement systems, it is realized as a self-measurement which is placed in this immutable piece of code. This self-measurement is the base for all other measurements and verification of uh, next executed components. Um, this immutable piece of code can be achieved via various mechanisms, which can be based on SPI uh, flash block mechanisms, like hardware protected mode, which I think uh, most of you already know about. It is a right pin protect screw right protect pin protect screw, for example, or a jumper. Or there is also um, a one-time programmable mode available on certain uh, spark flash chips that uh, allows to permanently flash the status registers on the spark flash. There are also some um, silicon vendor-based solutions, like AMD hardware validated boot, which is um, based on the PSP boot ROM, and um, only, only does allow to boot uh, cryptographically signed components in the early boot phase. Um, and the Intel Secure Boot or Boot Guard, which is also based on the ME or TXE boot ROM, which also serves the same purpose as AMD hardware validated boot. It does not allow to execute unsigned uh, code in the very early phase. And uh, first of all, why did I um, even attempt to uh, implement this, uh, even, be, even though uh, there is an implementation for all of this, almost, uh, in the core? So um, this was uh, mainly um, aimed at our customer needs, which who would like to have um, a firmware that will not allow to execute unsigned components and would have uh, be able to attest its own firmware with, uh, for example, the measurements that I made in the firmware. So the advantages of, uh, of the SRTM are basically uh, the measurements that are stored in the, securely in the TPM and which can be later used for the attestation in the OS. Um, those measurements can be also used to, uh, for example, seal some secret data like uh, disk encryption keys, and only the trusted firmware uh, state, or trusted platform state, I would say, uh, can allow to uh, unseal the secret, for example, to unlock the disk. Um, and the verified uh, firmware feature can also uh, pre prevent from uh, executing an uh, unsigned component in the firmware. Um, so, how does the SRTM look like in core boot? Um, so, verified and measured boot modes are available since February 2019. Uh, and the implementation was brought by Zolin, or 
known as Philip Dippen Visa also, which is an organizer of this conference. And basically uh, comprises the following components. Uh, from the first component, uh, the most crucial is VBoot, which is uh, Google's verified uh, boot reference implementation. Uh, the TPM driver, which is responsible for all whole low level access to the TPM, uh, is, it's, it's a part of core boot ba code base. And the flash map, also developed by Google on the needs of their Chromebooks, which allows to um, describe the uh, firmware image differently than, uh, than Corbett did it uh, before. So flash map has this advantage that uh, it can allow to have multiple Corbett file system inside. So we can have like uh, multiple uh, firmware stacks in one image. And what is most important, everything is open source. And so my implementation is based on uh, PCNG's APU2 platform. Uh, the TPM module is uh, Infineon, uh, SLB, as uh, presented on the slide. And um, the flash chip I have used to uh, in implement the permanent SPA flash lock is uh, from Adesto. It's an 8 megabyte chip. Um, this is how my uh, firmware image look like. This is a diagram that describes the flash map layout of the image. And it basically um, contains uh, most, it basically contains three parts that should be uh, mentioned. And the right protected read only legend is uh, six megabytes in size. It contains the, the boot blocks so the rest of the vector. Uh, the flash map layout description, um, the ROM stage where the RAM is initialized, and uh, the Linux kernel, which I will describe later. And in the read write sections, which are updatable, um, contains also uh, core boot stack beginning from RAM stage and payload. And I have some also some uh, miscellaneous read write region, for example, for uh, for PSP firmware and where I store, for example, the boot order or vital product data. Uh, so a little bit about Google's reboot. So it was um, made to make the verified boot happen on the Chromebooks. Uh, their idea behind that was to have a root key, the public part of root key stored in a structure called Google bind number block. Which, were, uh, which was then used to verify the signing, the firmware signing keys, which uh, signatures of the uh, code that is signed by these keys is in the V blocks in the read write firmware. And um, also, Google wanted to have the update procedure to be safe. That is why uh, they also um, implemented the two read write purchases. So, in case one partition is being corrupted or has uh, garbage or the firmware is broken there, there is also a backup uh, firmware partition B, for example, which can, be, which can be booted with older but still working firmware. And uh, the VBoot uh, also provides all the uh, cryptographic algorithms already. Um, what's different in my implementation than in Google's? Um, in Google's Chromebook, the root of trust, which was in the spy flash and the self-measurement, was protected by a few block protection bits of the SPF flash, along with a uh, hardware protected mode, which I mentioned earlier. So one has uh, been locking the status register and additionally um, protecting it with a write protect pin, with a screw or with a jumper, typically with a screw. But in my implementation, the lock is permanent, so it is uh, independent of the write protect pin state. And uh, uh, Chromeboxes or Chromebooks um, recovery mode uh, used uh, external USB to recover the operating system, not the firmware. In my implementation, I have put a minimal Linux kernel into read only to have a um, friendly shell uh, environment with a few um, necessary binaries like flash ROM and some network drivers, storage drivers, just to uh, get the firmware from some external sources. 
the trusted firmware and flash it back in case the read-write partitions are uh, untrusted. And uh, that's how it, the boot process looks like. So uh, we have, as I mentioned, the boot block and ROM stage with RAM initialization in the read-only firmware. In the ROM stage, there is executed the vboot logic, which decides which partition we do like to boot. And of course, of course, there's, uh, of course, it checks the signatures of the read-write partitions. And in case uh, these partitions are not valid, it boots to the read-only line stage and then the recovery kernel. Or if the partitions are valid, it boots normally with RAM stage and CBIOS payload and the, to the target operating system. Um, the TPM driver and core root, which is used in the SRT implementation, is located in the source security TPM directory and covers both TPM 1.2 and 2.0 modules. Um, and is responsible, like I said, yeah, for the whole low level access to the TPM. Um, it is mainly used in the vboot logic, which is um, implemented in the source security vboot. Um, this, this directory uh, mainly focuses on the hooks that need to be made uh, to the vboot in order to, uh, to, to enable the verified boot mode. And uh, there are two uh, files that um, need our attention. It is vboot CRTM which contains the um, initialization code for the vboot, uh, measure boot mode. Uh, it initializes DPM, uh, vboot context, and uh, does the self-measurement of all the components that we have, have already ex executed, uh, and, and the measurement of the GUI binary block, which is uh, extended to the PCR0 and is the uh, whole, uh, core of the root of trust. And there's also a um, vboot measured CBFS hook uh, function in the vboot CRTM, which is a hook that during an executable component execution, it invokes a hashing algorithm, which calculates the hash of the component and then extend it, extend it to the PCR before it is executed. Um, and the whole vboot logic starts at a program location. Typically, it is uh, RAM stage uh, or ROM stage when uh, we have a platform that supports the environment boot. So um, the main issue I have encountered uh, from the start uh, was the default uh, spy flash chip that was present on the uh, APU2 platform. And this win bond. Um, also uh, has the one-time program uh, mode available as the datasheet states. However, there is a small, small uh, note there that, hmm. that say that this mode is only available upon special order. So probably uh, I would have to order uh, thousands of chips uh, to get those uh, to get those mode uh, working. Either look for a, another spy flash part that would uh, do it out of the box without any special orders. And I fortunately found it. Um, I got found a desktop chip, which has surprisingly the same instruction sets, the same registers and everything. And moreover, has the spy one-time programmable mode available without any restrictions. Um, Please note that uh, this one-time programmable may not fit everybody since it was mainly uh, aimed to, to, to protect our customers' firmware. So not everybody may want to lock permanently their firmware and get stuck with some bugs if there are any in, in the locked sections. Uh, so, uh, and my additional value which I have added uh, to the SRTM is uh, boot other region. Uh, because with multiple CBFSs, uh, we cannot determine which partition we should check for the boot order file, which is utilized for CBIOS, um, to prioritize our boot medias. So I have um, made a small region in a flash map that uh, where where I store the boot order boot order entries, um, and made the CBIOS read it instead of CBFS file like it was previously. 
And now, thanks to that, I have a persistent boot order. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have put a minimal Linux kernel to the read-only flash part. Flash part. Um, I have a, I had about four megabytes left space there in read-only, um, but I managed to uh, put inside a, a minimal Linux kernel with only a few kilobytes left. Um, the kernel was built based on the heads repository. I just cut off some unused modules and put only some flash from CBMAM and GPG, for example, with signature verification and basic um, network drivers and remote storage drivers. And I've got a nice recovery shell, thanks to that. Uh, there was on, there was also a problem with uh, runtime configuration because um, Coreboot only does uh, support some runtime configuration based on CMOS, but uh, not everybody may may lack the, this solution because uh, the CMOS runtime configuration is dependent on the battery life on the platform. And uh, as uh, some may know that uh, the CMOS uh, memory can be influenced by cosmic rays, etc. Um, and I have thought about reusing the Vital product data by Google, of, uh, implemented by Google to store some configuration that may be changed during the firmware runtime. And so I have uh, um, included in my flash map layout uh, two regions, like read-only VPD and read-write VPD. In read-write VPD, I do store the default values of the or runtime configuration options. And in the read write VPD, I do store the modifiable runtime configuration options. What is more to the VPD, uh, it, the, it also provides a utility uh, to the user space that can freely modify either the firmware uh, online on the spy flash or, or uh, can directly man manipulate the file. So we can prepare our own binary and runtime configuration before flashing. Um, but there were also some obstacles here. Um, and the VPD partitions must be formatted uh, before they are propagated by Coreboot and uh, CBMAN. So um, I have stripped the Google's VPD utility and erased all the Flashroom API code and placed uh, under util VPD tool just to obtain some small utility to, to format the partitions uh, at the end of the Coreboot build. So when the config VPD is selected, I just uh, build the tool and format the partitions. And when the binary flashed, um, I, I have already got the VPD in correct format and it's uh, correctly propagated via uh, CBMEM hooks. Um, I have also added a VPD library to CBIOS in order to parse some of the runtime configurations like I can disable USB build, I can dis disable enable pixie boot, or um, even I can uh, disable serial console on my system, which is headless, etc. Um, and I see also the potential of the VPD to replace entirely the uh, old CBIOS configuration, which is based on CBFS files. Because in case of VBoot and multiple CBFS partitions, uh, it becomes just unusable because uh, we cannot uh, read. Uh, from the target partitions as we as we like. The VPD is a much more, more convenient approach. Okay, so I would like to show you some small demo uh, about the implementation. So I have a IPU2 here with the magic flash chip. And I will put it on other screen. Oh, and I have some small Debian uh, buster on the MSAT SSD for convenience. So um, to show you how the uh, Still, works. So I have 
the measurements here. You can see PCRs from, from 0 to 7 are uh, the PCRs of the BIOS. And I have also, oh crap, I have to, okay, and, and there are two binaries here already prepared for the demo. Um, and I have uh, already on the spy flash the core boot ROM image, which is seen on the console. And I will now flash um, another firmware, which is in fact the same firmware, but I have signed it with different and randomly generated vboot keys. And as you can say, we have, we have the uh, desktop chip, which was presented here. And currently there is no lock applied. So we can uh, flash entire firmware and be happy with it. So let's now try to lock on the, the, our spy flash. And I have enabled the block protection for the uh, write protected read only region and uh, enabled the one time program mode. So now the uh, whole six megabytes region, region, which I presented here, is now locked permanently. So if you, you would like, if you would like to uh, flash and the old uh, curve boot, which I have earlier. Let's say I will flash the WP, WPRO region. It says that the block protection could not be disabled already. And there should be errors that uh, the spy flash could not be raised with some sectors. Sector, sectors. Okay, this will loop for five or more times in order to check for different use functions, but it's not necessary to, to, to wait for the final output. So now uh, let's try to power off and unplug the power supply. It should now forget all the information we have got. So typically, if we uh, would uh, have the right protect pin uh, screw, it should disable the lock entirely. And uh, if I plug the supply, we will still have the flash lock there because it is one to one programmable mode. And if we try again, the right particular region only region to flash, it will still fail. Okay, so I would like to show you the last thing, uh, the recovery kernel also. So I will just overwrite the read-write sections. in order to uh, to force the recovery mode. And uh, as we see, these regions are still readable, as we will see, of course. And there we go, I'm already verifying. And let's reboot. The system will reboot itself two times because it will uh, find that one first partition is untrusted, second partition is untrusted. And now in the third boot, I can uh, go to recovery. And there you go. We have recovery mode, we have flash on here, we have CBMM to check the logs, 
uh, GPG for uh, importing some keys or verifying uh, signatures. We have uh, uh, DHCP also to, to get network configuration, etc. We have various ways to uh, download the firmware and flash it back to bring the platform to the trusted state. Okay, so that would, that would be it as for the demo. And uh, okay. And I will thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, oh, I missed one slide. The future improvements. Sorry. Uh, so uh, there are still some things to do, like uh, implementing the C environment boot block for the uh, AMD uh, 16H family. Um, I still need to uh, prepare some generic payload to to uh, modify boot order and VPD, uh, like in the proprietary UFI BIOSes, also for user convenience. Um, port uh, all the CBIOS runtime options to VPD. Um, there is still to do work with uh, maintaining the chain of trust until the OS because there is no currently known uh, implementation that uh, would uh, prolong the chain of trust with TPM 2.0 from the bootloader like grab to the kernel. There is of, of course the trusted grab, but it only supports TPM 1.2. And uh, there are a few uh, issues with the TPM 2.0 in Corn Boot. For example, all the logs for now are stored in the TCPA table, which is a table that uh, points to a memory that contains a log area for TPM 1.2. Um, the CPMM utility can print uh, TCPA logs, but not TPM 2 logs. And uh, I think it's a, it is a bug, but uh, CBIOS just starts writing TPM 2 logs at the start of the region, regardless there are any entries present there or not. And uh, the TPM2 logs, logs have also different format than uh, those uh, from TPM 1.2. So Core Boot should implement a correct format for the TPM2 logs also. And uh, I started to do some work on automatic disk encryption, decryption of TPM 2.0, but for now um, I had run into a bunch of issues like I have used uh, implementation based on Clevis, which is a, a framework for attestation and uh, storing secrets. And it looks like there is some race in the Draco that uh, does not allow to hook the Clevis into the uh, password prompt set. <laughs> so now question and answers. <laughs> and thank you for attention. Um, uh, I'm just a bit confused of the usage of vboot instead of just like uh, finalizing the initialization of the chipset. Why, why is it needed to actually lock? Uh, vboot does not do the chipset initialization. It is only a software that um, provides cryptographic operations and uh, integrates into a stack that allows verify uh, each executed component before it is executed. So it like verifies the uh, the firmware that is uh, loaded from the read write partitions. It is of, of course uh, digitally signed by the keys that are generated, also by Vboot libraries. Okay. Right then, thank you very much. Thank you.